Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are heading back down into the caves. We're getting so familiar with this cave, but there is a very good reason for that. Because down here, a while ago, we located something that I think it's high time we talked about. We are once again returning to the deep slate levels of the cave. And it's not the amethyst geode, but we've got something very close by that that we need to be paying special attention to. Right here in this little dip we have a creeper <laughs> so we need to take care of him first but next to that we have found a pretty huge deposit of deep slate iron ore surrounded by tough this is a sign that we have run into a huge iron vein iron ore veins like this can generate anywhere below y0 where the deep slate levels of the world begin and these are exceptionally rich veins of iron. Normally you will find iron in patches of one or two nearer the surface and then further down you can find it in larger patches of eight or nine or even ten iron ore. Sometimes veins will generate a little bit closer to each other and you'll get a little bit more but it tends to happen more in a lump of ore than it does in streaks like this. So streaks like this surrounded by tough are usually a good sign that you may have stumbled across a huge vein of iron. The dead giveaway is a block we removed from here the first time we encountered this, which was a full block of raw iron. The kind of thing that you get by crafting nine raw iron together that you've just dug out of the ground yourself. But these are not the only example of these large veins of ore generating in the world. There is one other material that you can find huge veins of. And on one of my Twitch live streams a little while ago, I was fortunate enough to run into the tail end of one of those veins. Although unfortunately that was right when my computer started crashing and I lost a little bit of progress in this world, but I did keep the coordinates, and so today we should be able to find that again. I remember it was in this area because there's a geode hanging from the ceiling right here, but if I look around at the walls, we should be approaching the coordinates. Yes, here it is. This looks like the early stages of a huge vein of copper. You'll notice granite generating around this, and these occur in the stone layers of the world, so anywhere above Y0 and upwards, up to about sea level at Y64. If I dig around the outside of some of this copper, you will typically find that the granite starts to disappear further into the rock, and as we mine out some of these blocks, we're uncovering more copper ore. And there's a cave underneath that, so I should be a little careful here. But today we're going to spend a bit of time excavating these veins to see how much material we can get, because these can be a huge boon to iron and copper reserves at this stage in the game, before we have set up any automatic farms for either type of material. Now we're going to be mining these out with fortune so we can maximize the amount of material we get, but I do want to keep a record of how many of the ore blocks we actually mine during this process. And luckily for me, Java Edition's statistics option has a really good way of checking this. If you click on items and click on times mined, you can see how many times you've mined each individual block, which even comes down to stuff like plants and resources. As of right now, the most precious resources I've got have been coal ore with 482 blocks mined. But as I scroll down here, you'll see 282 blocks of stone iron ore appears. Where is copper? Oh, copper is right here below deep slate redstone. We have mined 197 blocks of copper ore. I've taken a screenshot of that actually, so I don't forget it. We are going to see that number skyrocket once we have taken out this huge vein. We'll also probably have mined a lot of granite, and granite doesn't appear quite high on this list. We've only mined 58 blocks of granite total in this world so far. That is less than a stack. I have broken beds more frequently than I have broken granite. That is about to change. But the other one we're looking for is right here. Deep slate iron ore is the variant of iron ore that appears in those huge veins along with tough blocks. So we're going to be seeing a lot of iron ore in this episode as well. And just like the copper, we're going to fortune that so we can acquire as much of the raw iron as possible. I've already mined out quite a lot of tough because it generates frequently in the deep slate layers. And that's where we'll be looking for diamond ore, of which I have only mined 40 so far. <laughs> but before we start mining, the first thing I really want to do is make sure the area is somewhat secure. So I'm going to go around and light up a few of these darker areas just to make sure that no mobs are going to sneak up on me. I don't really want a creeper blowing up some of this copper ore that I'm excited about mining. And with that done, together we can take a look at the structure of these veins. So as you can see, lots of granite blocks generating around copper ore is a bit of a giveaway that we're onto a huge vein here. But you'll notice there are other pieces of granite around here that generate in these kind of blobs, and there's no copper ore around this one. And likewise, there is copper ore over here here in this wall, but it doesn't seem to have generated as part of a vein along with the granite. The granite here is kind of 
incidental. The way you can keep track of it being a huge vein is that the materials will occur in these kind of streaky sections instead of clumping together into larger blobs like the granite does here. And the blocks of ore will be very frequent. In granite and copper veins, it's kind of like a 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 ratio. And as you start clearing away the blocks of granite, you'll expose a lot of copper ore blocks in the process. Just clearing away the granite from this section here, we are uncovering more copper ore, and as we dig through that copper ore, we're likely to uncover more granite. And so it continues. With all the granite removed, we are left with a whole bunch of copper Copper, which we can now come in and mine. And it goes without saying that I'm going to need my ender chest for this, because especially with fortune, we're going to be getting a lot of copper. I've already got two and a bit stacks just from mining out this little area, and wherever we see granite from this point onwards, we're going to be continuing to mine through that in search of more blocks of copper ore. So we'll crack open the ender chest, we'll stuff the raw copper inside of there for now, I'll grab that with the silk touch pick, and also go and grab a crafting table, so that once we end up with enough copper, we're going to start condensing it down into full blocks blocks of raw copper, and that will save a bit of space in our ender chest. Once we're done with the copper vein, we'll do exactly the same thing with the iron vein here, and I think I'm probably going to set a time limit for each one, since I don't know for certain how long each one will go on for. Some of them can get massive. So I'm thinking 90 minutes on each one makes sense, because I normally stream on Twitch for about three hours, and I will be doing this on a Twitch live stream. In fact, by the time you're seeing this video, that live stream will already have happened. So I've gone back home, cleared out my inventory, I've got a stack of logs with me, We'll grab some more coal for torches whilst we're on our way down into the caves. Let's do this, and I'll see you folks on the other side where we can look at the results. Hey folks, welcome back. So we have finished mining out both of those ore veins, or at least I've finished a 90 minute session mining out each of those ore veins. The second of them, the iron vein, is still a work in progress because we spent 80 minutes over here mining out this area and pretty much every area here you can see that has been cleared that isn't just natural cave generation like this. If we come around the corner here you'll see a little bit more where we had to continue tracking down that copper going through the granite here and any granite that you see left over is just naturally generated blobs of granite that didn't have any copper ore in them whatsoever. But around here, the twists and turns that this vein took, we have ended up mining out all of the copper I could find. But then after 80 minutes, it was really kind of a struggle to see where this vein went, if anywhere, or if it was just done with and it had all disappeared. I really think of the two of them, this vein was potentially the smaller one, or maybe it just suffered from the amount of caves that generated around here. If you take a look at the cave generation in these surroundings, there are areas like this where the vein could have generated, but the cave generation has kind of taken over. And going further up and around here, where we could have encountered some more of the copper vein, it seemed like the area was giving over into dripstone cave generation, and I sort of decided at that point that we should stop pursuing the copper ore vein, at least in this direction, because dripstone caves frequently generate copper in them, so I wasn't entirely certain which one was going to be the vein generating it and what was going to be natural generation from the cave. So after 80 minutes of digging, I felt like I had tracked down all of the copper ore that I was going to find. I mean, there's still some generating in the walls around here, but I don't think that's part of the copper ore vein itself. And in the process of this, I've dug up a lot of granite. We now have a great deal of granite just kind of sat here in this chest. That's all from this vein, all the granite that I feel like I was forced to dig up just to get hold of some more copper. But copper we now have in such large quantities, and that's really down to the fact that the copper ore will give you a bunch of raw copper if you mine it with Fortune 3. Normally a single block of copper ore will drop between 2 and 5 raw copper, but when mined with Fortune 3 it can drop as many as 20. On average, according to people on the Minecraft wiki who've done the maths, it comes out to about 7 or 8 raw copper per block. But now if I go to my statistics page, we take a look at the times mined, we now have 1,284 copper ore mined, which, if we deduct the 197 copper ore I'd already mined, comes out to 1,080 six copper ore from basically every block we could find in that vein. And like I said, with a persistent mining effort, that took about 80 minutes to find all of that. And remember, each one of these blocks of raw copper, being made of nine of these raw copper items, will smelt down into nine copper ingots, and so that constitutes a full block of copper once it's been smelted, which means we basically have 14 stacks of copper blocks at this point. That's quite a lot. <laughs> in fact, the statistics panel here will also tell you how many items you have picked up if you click on this button at the top here, and we have picked up by far the most 
raw copper. That includes the amount of raw copper that we picked up in this world previously, but I reckon if you subtract a few hundred from that, you're still looking about 8,000 copper that we have mined just today alone. And so if you imagine that took 80 minutes, that's about 100 copper per minute. <laughs> that's really not bad. And now that my ender chest is empty again, we're going to take all of that raw copper back with us. We're going to take all of it in the ender chest, and hopefully we will have room for all of the iron that I collected. In the process of doing this, I did take a note of how much durability my diamond pickaxe had lost. We used the fortune pickaxe for basically every block we mined in there, and after all that activity, it was left with 645 durability, so we'd maybe knock two-thirds off of the durability of our diamond pickaxe. Although I did have to stop and get some coal at one point, so it might have gained some durability back from that. Now let's go and compare the results from the huge iron vein that we found. So I know for a fact that we have mined a lot more blocks of the huge iron vein, and they weren't all around here. And yes, I have really torn up the floor in order to make sure we got as many of these iron blocks as we can. There's still a little bit of tough around here, so there could still be the occasional block of raw iron hanging out in here, but I'm fairly certain we've got most of it from around here. And we had to follow the iron vein back through the cave, because sooner or later this area got fully depleted. We ended up digging into my skeleton spawner at one point because the iron vein generated around there. So I sort of intuited from some of the iron ore that I'd seen growing on the pillars here in this cave that we ended up with an iron vein that went through the cave in this direction. And eventually I came upon this patch over here, where as you can see, there's a bit of tuff. Next to that redstone ore, I've been digging out a whole bunch. There's probably a little bit more buried in here, although some of this could be just a natural blob of tuff that generated as part of the cave. But around here, we really went to town digging some stuff out. And in the process, we found ourselves some goodies. But if we come on down here, this whole area, everything that you see here was me digging it out in favor of finding all of that iron ore and down here at the end, we are still going. I mined this out for 90 minutes, and we were not done. We were still finding other precious resources, but we were definitely still finding more iron ore as well. Now, going back to my statistics for a second, if we go back to the times mined, you will see that deep slate iron ore is now creeping up on copper ore. There's only 60 blocks between them, but we started with a lot less deep slate iron ore mined originally, because we've been mining regular iron ore. We haven't been going down here for iron ore as much. So in total, I figured out we have now mined 1,133 iron ore from this huge vein, which is about 50 more than the copper ore we were able to collect from the copper ore vein. So we've actually mined out more iron ore than we have copper. We've also mined a lot more tough and deep slate now. I'm pretty sure we had a decent amount of those before since we'd be getting those whilst we're strip mining for diamonds and looking for other precious resources down in this level of the world. So I'm not sure if we've actually mined more tough and deep slate than we did granite and natural stone when we were digging out these areas, but we definitely got a lot more blocks out of it. And I'm pretty sure that we pulled more blocks of deep slate and tough out of this vein than we did of granite out of the copper vein, because this double chest is almost full of the tough and deep slate, and we have a significant amount of it stored in this chest along with the iron. This little chest above just has any stuff that was in my inventory that I wanted to stash away in there that wasn't part of the vein mining operation. But take a look at the amount of iron we have. It's a little bit different than the amount of copper, isn't it? And that's really because a block of iron ore is only going to drop between one and four iron when you mine it with fortune. So it's nowhere near the amount of yield that you get from copper blocks, considering you can get up to 20 raw copper and you're getting about eight on average. From iron on average, you're getting two. So copper is going to get you four times as many. It just stands to reason. We definitely mined more raw iron, so it does make sense that we're going to be getting slightly more. But the most telling thing, I think, is the pickaxe durability. We're at 232 from a fully repaired pickaxe. I did go to my XP farm in between mining out the two veins and fully repair this pickaxe. And I'm actually kind of surprised that we ended up mining more blocks of this, considering that we are mining through deep slate and tough. And while tough doesn't break any slower than the granite does, deep slate is a harder block to mine for the average pickaxe. We do have a very efficient pickaxe. We're running efficiency five. It's the most efficient pickaxe we have at this stage in the game. But deep slate still has a slightly longer time to break. And the amount of deep slate we've collected here really does mean that we've ended up with a lot of those blocks slowing us down. It's probably only a minuscule amount, but it does add up. And I think where the discrepancy lies is the fact that the copper vein 
kind of led us on a bit of a runaround. I wasn't sure where the copper vein went a couple of times, it disappeared into abandoned mine shafts and through caves, and I lost track of it a couple of times, whereas this iron vein just kept on giving us more iron. And in the end, I did spend 90 minutes on this vein and still didn't finish, whereas in 80 minutes of that copper vein, it was pretty much gone. So of course, the other important stuff and the stuff that I've been neglecting to mine because I was more interested in the iron output from this vein, we have a handful of diamonds and redstone that are down here as well, because of course, if you're digging around in deep slate levels, you are bound to find this stuff sooner or later, and there are some areas of this vein that go all the way down as far as bedrock. So I'm going to take advantage of this. For a start, it's going to repair some of my diamond pickaxe, which could extend your mining session down here even longer if you were somebody who wanted to keep going whilst you were mining down here. But look at this, we're getting a whole bunch of diamonds. This is probably doubling what I've got left over in storage. And once again, this is right by a section that we haven't mined out from the huge iron vein yet. There's a little more redstone over here, which I'll grab seeing as it's here. A bunch more redstone here in the walls. I've been effectively using these like landmarks, so I might get a little bit more turned around now that I've removed them. Down here, we have a bunch more gold ore that generated in a double vein, and that's <laughs> really nice for bolstering our gold supplies. And there's even more iron behind it. Down here, we have yet more diamonds. There's a patch of gravel here that seems to have erased any other chances of getting diamonds from there. And down here, this is a four vein of diamond that we found at bedrock. So that takes us to 28 diamonds that we found just by mining out this area. And I think I might have left a couple over by the door. Yep, there's a couple up here as well. Let's grab those while we're at it. 30 diamonds total. So naturally, in the process of digging out one of these veins, you are going to uncover large areas of the terrain that were not previously exposed to the open air. And as you might expect, that is going to increase your chances of finding diamonds since they typically generate with less air exposure. And this hasn't been my first time digging out these huge veins of ore since they were introduced in Minecraft 1.18. But one thing I was reminded of this time is quite how meandering and windy and maze-like these tunnels can get if you just focus on mining the tuff and the ore and you leave the rest of the blocks around them. So honestly, one approach I might recommend, even if it does take a little bit longer, is to be more organized about the way in which you dig. As you come down through here, you're going to get all twisted and turned around, and leaving torches on a wall while it's obviously a pretty useful tactic in a cave, might just end up getting a little too confusing. I left some diamonds up here, 33. <laughs> Another piece of advice I will have is that if you encounter one of these large blobs of tuff, it's often fairly clear whether or not the iron vein continues through them. Just dig through the center of it, following the line that the trail of iron seemed to be making, and if you find some more iron ore blocks, then it's possible that it even goes through and out the other side. But if, like this, you're discovering that you just hit more tuff, it seems fairly likely that the trail ends there. Something I learned from the huge copper vein is that if the area around you seems to dry up and you're not finding anything new, check any nearby caves. As I was progressing through the copper vein, I wasn't really finding a great deal of adjacent material, but then I went into a cave and discovered a whole offshoot of the copper vein that had generated seemingly somewhere else. And that led through to areas like this, where this copper generation clearly isn't part of the huge vein, but is still a massive deposit of copper because we're entering a dripstone cave where copper is more likely to generate. And much like the diamonds and redstone generating in the iron vein, the copper vein is still going to be a pretty decent source of iron and gold, and even lapis, since each of those will generate around the same height range that copper does. I even ended up finding one area down here past this little patch of gravel, and I was starting to use landmarks like that to navigate by this time, but I found an area down here where the copper vein crossed paths with an abandoned mine shaft. And I did some digging around here, and I found even more copper, plus access to the abandoned mine shaft that I could explore and loot at my leisure. Oh, there's a little bit more of it here. There we go. I knew there was going to be a touch more around here somewhere. And if we continue to follow it around here, we could be following this copper vein for a little while. So I gave up the chase potentially a little early, but it really does feel like these veins can go on for quite a while once you're mining them out. You just have to remember that every time you see granite, you mine it. If you see copper behind that, you mine that. And just like when you're searching for other veins of ore, it is always worth checking your diagonals just in case there's a block hidden behind the wall. There's a lot of doubling back involved and there's also a lot of vertical jumping for areas like this where the copper vein takes a very sharp turn upwards. So for those, I recommend bringing a material that is not native to the area, like cobblestone for example. Since you're only going to find natural stone in caves, 
you'll know that that is a marker for where you left off or where you had to go upwards. And that's going to be a good alternative to using something like granite to pillar up and then tricking yourself into thinking that you've not mined there already. There are still these full blocks of ore to be found, which usually indicates that this is a pretty hefty part of the vein. So I'm pretty happy that we found that one. That's another statistic we should go over, actually. If we take a look at the times mined and scroll down towards the end, because we haven't mined a huge amount of them, you'll notice I got 28 blocks of raw iron from that huge iron vein, which probably includes the one that I mined the first time we found this. But in terms of blocks of raw copper, we're only at 11, so I found many fewer of them in the copper vein so far than I found in the iron vein. I don't know if that's necessarily part of the way they generate, and I have just found two in very short succession here, so it may be that I just didn't find the right parts of the copper vein, but even so, it seems like we got a lot of full blocks of raw iron out of the iron vein. But with this vein continuing upwards, I think we're probably going to call it quits anyway, because my inventory is getting full, despite the fact that I've tossed a bunch of stuff into the ender chest already, and I'm a little way away from home, so I should probably head back there, take stock of all of the materials we've come back with, and wrap up for today. Oh, it feels really good to see home again. <laughs> feels like we've been down in the mines for a good long while today, but the results really speak for themselves. We've got so many resources in the ender chest now. We've got a bunch of lapis that doesn't even fit in the ender chest because we've got so much stuff there. So let's open it up and take a look. Look at all this raw copper. We're going to need a bigger resource chest for this. I think it's probably going to have to stay somewhere else for a while. Maybe we'll tuck it away in here where I actually stashed a bunch of my equipment and whatnot from the the ender chest so we could clear it out and have a totally free space to gather all of this. I'm going to take about half a stack of copper, break that down into raw copper, and we're going to throw that in the blast furnace because I want to do something with all of this copper now we have it. We can take the redstone and the diamonds and put those in this chest, and as I expected, we are basically tripling the amount of diamonds we had just from the incidental diamonds we found digging out that huge vein of iron ore. And you might be wondering, sure, the iron, I can imagine that's pretty useful. You're going to get hoppers, minecarts, all of the stuff that we used in the uh, setup for the sugarcane farm the other day. There's loads of stuff that you can use iron for. It's good for armor, it's good for tools. What's copper good for exactly? Well, one of the things we can do with copper is create a lightning rod by crafting three copper ingots in a line into a lightning rod like so. And we should probably have one of these outside because we've been working with villagers for a little while and the villagers here have this rudimentary shelter but they aren't protected from lightning strikes, and some weird stuff happens to Minecraft's mobs when lightning strikes happen. Trust me, the roof over their heads right there is not quite enough to protect them from what's potentially going to happen if they get struck by lightning, so we're just going to put a lightning rod around here. And a single lightning rod will have a pretty wide radius it protects from lightning, so any lightning strikes in this area should strike this rod and we should have no problems with our villagers getting hit by it. We've already seen a couple of the other uses for copper, which include the brush and the spyglass, but really, where copper comes into its own is as a building block. Copper has some really interesting properties that are worth exploring in a full video of their own, but if we place copper a few blocks apart like this, after a little while, these copper blocks are going to start aging. They will go through different stages of oxidation. They start as this shiny orangey pink colored copper, they end up getting exposed, which takes some of the shine off, and then they will start to weather and finally oxidize, at which point they take on that verdict degree patina that you see in old copper statues, the most famous example probably being the Statue of Liberty. And if you are going to build a life-size Statue of Liberty in your Minecraft world, you are going to need a lot of copper blocks. So that is really the reason that huge veins of copper exist. It's also worth noting that if we throw copper into a stone cutter, we'll get cut copper, and a single block of copper will get you four cut copper. From that point, you can't craft it down into copper ingots anymore because you've started splitting it up at that stage, but it is much better to do that in the stone cutter than in the crafting table. Because you can make cut copper in a crafting interface in a 2x2 two two like so, but then you're putting four blocks of copper in and only getting four blocks of cut copper out, where you could be getting 16 out of them if you use the stone cutter. Back out here, it looks like a couple of our copper blocks have now started to age. So you see what I mean, they start to take on a different colour. This is now exposed copper, which is a completely separate block to the regular copper. That can be turned into cut exposed copper. The weathered copper can be turned into cut weathered copper, and you can make slabs and stairs out of those blocks as well. So really, when you get hold of copper, you are not just getting one block, you're getting four blocks. And those four blocks can be turned into slabs and stairs and different different variants, there's a whole copper family for us to explore. But we're going to have to save that for another day. For now, folks, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and taking a look at 
huge veins of copper and iron ore. Hopefully you have some luck tracking those down in your worlds because they are a lot of fun to dig out and you'll never have more resources from a single caving expedition. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixlriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.